Recorded live. Good morning, everybody. This is Larry Phillips, and uh, this morning I wanted to do a Bible study on one of the most uh, profound chapters in the Bible, the first uh, chapter of Colossians. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, <laughs> and Timotheus, our brother. I've often said Paul, throughout his epistles, uh, affirms and reaffirms that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. It had nothing to do with his will. He was running the other direction, and something happened, didn't it? Paul was born again by the Spirit of God, quickened by the Spirit of God. Verse 2, To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. A lot of people say, well, why pray if God is sovereign and... um, He has preordained everything that occurs. Why pray? Well, God has also ordained prayer. (laughs) And he's ordained what we pray and how we pray and when we pray and where we pray. (laughs) Verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints... Sometimes people question our love for the saints. Um, But if we are truly one of God's elect, we do have love for all the saints, even to those who are politically correct. (laughs) Yes, we love those who are politically incorrect, but we still love those who are politically correct. God's still working on them, right? (laughs) Verse 5 for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before the world of the truth of the gospel. We have a great hope. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels will beckon me through heaven's open door. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. We have a hope laid up for us in heaven. Verse 6, Which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it does also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of our God in truth. You know, sometimes it doesn't appear that we are bearing much fruit. But then God gives us some little uh, parcel of hope as we see a person or maybe uh, a situation turn for the praise and the glory of God. Verse um, 7, As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister in Christ, who also declared unto you, I'm sorry, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. My son is cutting logs this morning. Um, And uh, he uh, spends a lot of time, you know, he has his own room and his own bed, but he chooses to sleep in here on the couch uh, close to where I'm doing this broadcast. And uh, So if you hear him cutting logs, you'll know, you know what, what's going on. Okay. Verse 8, Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, 
and desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We're not seeking the wisdom of the world. There are many out there today who are trying to have one step in the world and one step in the kingdom of God, one step in the world and one step in the church. They're doing the splits. (laughs) Uh, Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. You can't serve two masters. You're going to love the one and hate the other or hate the one and love the other. I recently had a conversation with a gentleman who uh, has some tremendous messages, but it seems like uh, he just built a brand new church building, and it seems like all of his focus right now is on that building, you know. Scripture says there'll come a time when they'll worship in buildings not made with hands, There's not going to be any temples in heaven where Christ himself will be the temple there. Verse 10, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We are... uh, We are, as Christians, doing works. (laughs) We are being conformed to the image of his Son. It doesn't come from us, but we see that we, the prayer is that we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Growing in the grace of God and the knowledge of God. Leaven strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. There are those out there that um, are, you know, touting um, what we have to do if we're a Christian to prove we're a Christian, what we have to do. Well, my friend, We can do nothing. We can do nothing unless we're strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. And all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. Verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet (laughs) to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Paul knew (laughs) <laughs> where his spiritual life came from. He's the one got knocked down and was blinded and said, you know, heard the voice from heaven, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he never forgot it in his ministry, did he? He says here in 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. 12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You know, we should take no credit of ourselves for these uh, things that God has done within us. If we have any strength, if we have any Uh, patience, if we have any long-suffering, we know that it's according to his glorious power. And we know that we should be giving him thanks because he's the one that made us to be uh, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13, who hath delivered us from the power of of darkness and hath translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. Let's not forget that. Sometimes we in our um, 
grappling with this war between the flesh and the spirit, we forget that he has del- he's translated us in the kingdom of his dear son. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. You know, when you um, or I register something with a brother or sister in Christ that we have a disagreement over, and um, they just seem to just ignore it and take on an air about them. They're insensitive to our concerns. Um, Let us remember that both them and us have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Fifteen, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Jesus is before Adam. (laughs) Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And he was before Adam. Yes, he came in time. He was born in a manger was manifested in time, but he was before then. 16, by him, speaking of Christ, by him were all things created. So he had to be around before, he had to be around before creation if he created all of these things, didn't he? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. One of the most powerful verses in the whole Bible. So, I'm going to read it again. (laughs) For by him, by Christ, were all things created. Think about that. For by Christ were all things created. Even this despicable Larry Phillips. (laughs) Uh, That are in heaven. All things were created by Christ that are in heaven. I don't know everything that's in heaven. But I know that there are mansions there. Because he says, if I go away, I will prepare a place for you. When I come again, that you may be with me there also. In my Father's house are many mansions. He created all things that are in heaven. He created all things that are in earth. And you say, well, God didn't create, Jesus didn't create refrigerators and microwaves and uh, solar panels and uh, generators and cars and on and on. Well, according to here, it says that he uh, created all things, uh, visible and invisible, things that we can't see with the naked eye he created. You know, we get out a microscope and we can see atoms and molecules. Christ created all of those things. That's why we can say there are no maverick molecules, there are no maverick atoms whether they be thrones, you know, thrones. Christ created all thrones. Obama's throne, Prince Charles' throne, uh, Saddam Hussein's throne when he was alive, George Bush's throne when he was alive, you know, Hillary Clinton's throne when she gets to be president, ha, ha, ha. She probably will. Um, If you look at the most immoral, this is where our country has gone, if you look at the most immoral 
um, and the most um, the the thing that is the furthest away from any kind of similitude to Christ, that's who they'll put in office. But <laughs> we have to be remembered here that Christ is the one that created these thrones, these dominions, these principalities. It's like he's sovereign over evil. He's created powers. All things were created by him, and it tells us why. They were not only created by Christ, but they were they were created for Christ. Um, and verse 17, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Uh, this earth would literally crumble away and into into never never land if it weren't for Christ, because it says here that all things uh, consist by Jesus Christ. Verse eighteen, and He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. You know, Christ's resurrection uh, assures our resurrection. Christ's death on the cross assures our forgiveness. Christ's death on the cross assures that we can be with him in glory. For if he had remained in the tomb, we would be yet in our sins. But here he says that he's the head of the body of the church. There's a lot of people that feel that, you know, other people are the head of the church. You know, uh, you know if they have a doctor's degree, that makes them the head of the church. Uh, and if they have two doctor's degrees, that really gives them preeminence, doesn't it? <laughs> it says here that in all things he might have the preeminence. Christ should have the preeminence, not man or man's degrees or man's wisdom or man's ability to interpret and translate Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> yes, Christ might have the preeminence. He's the head of the body of the church, not man, not elders, not deacons, not bishops, not the one with the most money in the church. Not the one that is able to say the most politically correct things. Okay, he is the head of the body of the church. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. You know, you know, not Pope Francis. Pope Francis is not even in the church. Is Antichrist. Here we see that Christ, uh, it was pleased that Christ by the Father, that in him should all the fullness dwell. Verse 20 And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things in himself, by him I say, whether they be thrones in earth or things in heaven. God is the great reconciler. You know, and you know, there's a song, My God is Reconciled. No, we're reconciled to Him. You know, uh, He doesn't need to be reconciled to us. He's the reconciler. He's the one that reconciles all things unto Himself, it says here. 21 and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, even now hath he reconciled. He's the one that does the reconciling. We don't reconcile ourselves to God. He reconciles us to him by his work, by his Holy Spirit, by his sovereignty. You know, the spirit bloweth where it listeth, and no man knoweth the sound thereof. There is such as everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. You must be born again. 
22, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That's what he's going to present us. He's going to present us holy, unblameable, and unreprovable because of the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ to all of his people. 23, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, don't be moved away to the things of this world. Scripture tells us that the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Don't be moved away from the completed work of Christ on the cross. Try to figure things out. Go back to the original Hebrew and Greek and and not resting in the preserved word of God. Grounded and settled. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven where I, Paul, am made a minister. <laughs> made a minister. It wasn't his, it wasn't Paul's decision to make himself a minister. He was made a minister by God himself, by the will of God. Verse 24, who now uh, rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. You know that Paul's sufferings uh, was done for the church, for the body of Christ. He suffered all of those persecutions for the body of Christ. Are you suffering for the body of Christ today? Are you suffering? Well, if you're one of God's elect and you're suffering, you're suffering for the body of Christ. 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. It's not manifested to everybody. You know, Everybody, there's so many Armenian preachers out there that talk about that, you know, uh, this mystery has been manifested to everybody. No, it hasn't been manifested to every woman, a man, boy, and girl without exception, but it's manifested to his saints. 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm glad that it wasn't limited to just the Jews. <laughs> you know, it was foretold that he would be a light unto the Gentiles. And the light is, what is the light? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 28, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Notice, not that we may not that we may uh, present every man uh, perfect because he's entirely sanctified in himself. <laughs> he says here that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's the only perfection we have is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's what they taught in the Armenian schools. But they failed to say where man's holiness was coming from. Where was man's holiness coming from? from? To present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working power, which worketh in me mightily. Verse 29. He didn't say that he didn't struggle. He didn't say he didn't strive. He didn't say he didn't labor. But what he did say, all of his laboring and striving was according to Christ's 
working in him mightily. What a powerful chapter this is for us this morning. I hope that this has been a blessing, and I hope that uh, you will read the um, book of uh, uh, Colossians uh, very frequently, because I think that it is a a book that um, will edify and build up the body of Christ. And so uh, let us think on these things this morning and may the good Lord continue to work in us to do and will of his own good pleasure.